This is a class for an undergraduate course at the University of Calgary, CPSC 203. Its title is Problem Solving Using Applications. Uh, but in some cases, students in this, this class actually learn how to write their own applications, a little bit of simple programming. The students in this class are all computer science ma non-majors. In fact, anyone who wants to major in computer science uh, cannot actually take this course for credit. That's particularly impressive when you see the assignment that the students in the fall 2020 semester have worked on. I have here the Alberta Health Services, the AHS website, that has some information about COVID infections in our province. Uh, as you see here, we've got information about hospitalizations currently, how many people are in the ICU, how many people have passed away in this province because of the infection, and so on. Now, last spring, the motivation for this assignment came last spring. Like everybody else, I was looking to for some hope in the bleakness that the ever rising cases in the spring would eventually uh, peak and decline the so-called flattening of the curve. And I thought that the best place to look for the official information was Alberta Health Services because all the, uh, the news outlets get their information from them. So I looked at information, some of the information available. This is the highlights and this gives me a snapshot. There is a new cases And we have information about new infections in different zones here, which is, which can give you an idea how, how different parts of Alberta are doing, of course. And then we've got demographic information, infections for different age groups, um, cases reported, active cases, and so on. But what I was looking for was potentially that there was a sign of hope here, that things would be getting better. And I couldn't tell from looking at this information. Then I looked under another one of these ones, total cases, and now this is essentially what I was looking for at the time, to some form, plotting of the information over time. The number here we have, say the total cases, over time. Well, it's possible to see with such a curve when dramatic changes have occurred, we've got total cases suddenly shooting up and seeing the opposite potentially when there's the this just above it when there's a sort of flattening of the curve that slope is increasing at a less drastic rate than here but it's actually hard to really see if the changes aren't so drastic for instance i had found eventually um, when i was plotting the information when there was an actual peak at the end of april there's 300 at that time 351 new infections at the end of April, one of the days, and then it dropped off dramatically to 200, 200, about 250. But it's harder to see when we have the total cases here. It's a little bit hidden. So I scroll down a bit further because we've got total active, recovered, and people passed away. And again, this is totals. I looked under the previous uh, link for the new stuff, but they didn't actually plot the new infections over time. They, they tend to do by zone and provide snapshots for a particular point in time. And we have different cases of how people were infected. Uh, we had other information about probable, prob where it's probable they gotten confer uh, probable COVID infection, actual confirmations. But I, nothing here that I could find that would help me flatten the curve. I went through all these links and I couldn't find anything that would allow me to quickly see it. Again, this is useful information, but for the information I was looking at, I, I, I couldn't, couldn't find it. Then I got over here to data export. This will take a moment here, so we'll, there we go. And then I know, oh my goodness, this appears to be on a particular row, actual infection information, anonymized of course, for uh, an actual person that was infected. The first infection apparently was March the 6th, first infection in Alberta, March the 6th in Calgary, and we have additional information. Unfortunately, this person recovered. 
And then after the 7th and 8th, no new infections recorded. And then on the 9th, we had three, four, five infections. Okay, this is the information I'm looking at, the number of infections over time. But, of course, with just a long table like this, it's and there's currently many entries up to this point, we're looking at December the 2nd, there's almost 60,000 people in this province who have been infected. Now, looking even just in this period of time, this raw data wouldn't tell me easily, I couldn't tell easily, if the how much the rate was increasing. However, when I scrolled down a bit further, I saw this, the ability to export this information. So I said, said hmm, let's, let, let's see what we can get from this. And now, because I'm exporting the information, uh, the first entry was in March, and now we're looking at uh, nine months later, eight months later in, in the beginning of December, roughly the end of November information. This will take some time to actually compile the spreadsheet. And if you actually, as the, the reader of this video, want to do this yourself, don't be despondent if you see this sometimes happen. Just be patient and click the wait. And we can see it's downloading. See, it's taking a while. Oh, there it is. And we have a new file that appeared in downloads, just to prove it's the actual AHS data. See, it's 205, December 2nd, December 2nd. This is the actual data. About 30,000 megabytes size spreadsheet. Okay, I downloaded it from web, so I have a bit of a warning. Be careful of it. But it's just a regular Excel file, so it can't contain, uh, easily contain a malicious program attached. And now, whoops, we compare here. See, we have the information from March the 6th, March the 9th, a female on March the 6th, another female March the 9th. A female March the 6th, female March. So we've actually downloaded all the information here. And if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, the last. So now we're at, according to the latest information, 59,484 cases. And you might be wondering, well, why is it November 26th here? We have some November 28th here. That's because this information is not sorted in order. I'm not entirely sure why it's the case, not sorted chronologic. I suspect that um, if we had some cases that were um, earlier, sometime earlier, we might have someone who is a long hauler, hasn't recovered, or unfortunately passed away later on, so they update the information later in the spreadsheet. But although it's not sorted, we do, you should be confident that this is actual real information that we have about COVID infections in the province of Alberta. And it appears, let's see, my estimate is, looks like they've updated as of November the 30th. So it's a few days behind because they will they probably take some time to compile the information. So at this point, um, I have the raw data, but it doesn't tell me whether the curve is flattening, whether it's flattening in in spring, March, or in March to April, to May, or how much it's increasing now, we're looking at December. It's not an easy synopsis of it. So then, I, of course, I, I realized that I'd have to do some sort of counting. How many, time, how many people were infected um, for each particular day and count it? And I also thought, beyond that, another piece of information to provide us, unfortunately, there are some people who succumb. So I also wanted to see what a toll it was taking. Um, initially, I thought of using some, there are some built-in, excellent built-in Excel functions for counting the instances, but they would be very awkward to use in this case because they specify, you have to specify a range it's counted. And if you think about it, 
as new entries are added to the uh, as new infections occur for each new infection a new role is added and right now at the end of November being December we have infection new infection numbers say between a thousand up to about 1700 new people so that's a thousand 1700 new rows and with the counting functions at the time I couldn't see any way except for counting how many instances of a date we had so far in that range how many did we have in March 6 um, that one's easy we only had one but some of these there's a thousand rows and that range that I'm counting would constantly have to change so I'd ha constantly have to have another counting function for each date and I'd have from March to November counting functions up this snapshot and then we get into January and so on I keep adding more and more of these counting functions and the range for even the previous counting functions would have to change as well too so there's no way that I could in a, a um, easy elegant way to actually get the information that I needed so at that point I figured okay well I'm a computer scientist so um, if someone hasn't written a program to do what I need to do well actually first off if someone hasn't actually graphed the information summarized it allowed me to visualize the information because that I would have been content to find to actually look at a visualization like that um, if someone did that I would have stopped then I actually looked at the raw data and then the next thing I thought to myself was can we get the information compile the information tally it and then graph it based on built-in Excel functions and I couldn't see an elegant way of doing that It'd be quite a bit of work so finally I went on my third fallback position and I said um, okay then I'm a computer scientist I'll need to write a program that basically does the count counts the instances but before it does the count it probably have to sort it in order um, the gist of this program essentially is that it is in order to determine the number of people that were infected on a particular day it just looks at the date and counts how many dates occurred and it's easier to do that count if we actually have the dates sorted in order the other piece of information I wanted to see to see how much of a of course infections have a major human impact but how many people had succumb so what a, on particular days so if, while I'm also counting the number of rows that have a day I also needed the cross references so we'll go down here and say for March the 14th for cases where it's mo a particular day and that status is the person had died how many do I have for a particular day that's essentially what I, I determined I needed to do with a program um, I'm going to take a transition here well I actually this has no program so I'm going to save this first this has no program because it's from AHS and this is a standard Excel spreadsheet which cannot contain programs so I'm going to save this first into a different convert it to a different format an Excel spreadsheet file that can contain programs the program is called macro enabled and I'll name it something Alberta COVID statistics up to actually say retrieved December 2nd so I know that snapshot so now this file has the ability to have a program attached to it I'm gonna have a bit transition where I basically take the program that I have have written eventually wrote and then insert it here and now what I've done is I inserted the program that I wrote into this new spreadsheet um, that contains the downloaded AHS data that I, I just 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 retrieved add a few headings the information that I'm going to summarize over here is for a particular date so say March the 6 it's gonna go through all these rows almost 60,000 rows of data and determine how many rows were for March the 6 and count and put the count here and for a particular day fortunately no one passed away March the 6th this is the only instance it's going to count the number passed away so it's zero for this one but for some of these days down here 
We see, unfortunately, some people had succumbed, such as March the 17th, March the 14th. And that information about number of people passed away for a particular day will be here. Up here, we'll have information written about the total number of cases, a summary. So we don't, that would provide for me, the, the viewer of this, um, the snapshot of the number of rows so I don't have to scroll down every time. And then finally, what this program that I wrote is going to do is graph over time in one graph, the number of new affections over time, and in another graph, the number of people who passed away over time. So I'm gonna run the program It's in this file. I, ha I retrieved it from another, uh, the program from another file. I run it and we'll see this area get populated. And now we have that information. So we have that tallying rather than me counting the rows. It's counted it for me, 60,000 rows and growing. It isn't practical, obviously, for me to count this and doing this for every day. And over here, this is a little bit different from, from the AHS. I'll enlarge it so we can see it for This is different from the AHS information, because you see here, I've moused over March the 6th, it shows just the new infections. So we're up to say here, the information, March the 29th, the new infections, according to the AHS information, 1,726. Hopefully that's the beginning of a real trend, but we've had ups and downs, but generally we're much higher in the March thin in October and higher in October than in March. This visualization I mentioned that when I wrote this program um, about April 20th of this year, 2020, I kept seeing this information we'd actually see the numbers being published in newspaper, although with the raw numbers, we might have say on this date, the newspaper news media would publish April 20th, we'd have 183 infections and they publish another day on April 21st, 264. Unless you manually enter that in and then graph that, you wouldn't be able to see any trends. Right about here is when I actually wrote my uh, program and I saw the increase and I got to here and this was the, we saw 341 at the time. I thought, oh man, before that we had 294, before that we had 264. And then after running it for a few days, I noticed, oh, there was a drop. It, there's so much data here because now we're looking at uh, up to December, but there, there's far less data. I could actually see mouse over the individual days. I saw consistently over a number of days, a drop and quite a bit of a drop. From that peak of 341, it went down to the mid 200s. And although the news media had published um, the actual numbers, there's no mention that even a tentative mention that there was a, um, that there was potentially a downward trend. Um, but that's understandable. They probably didn't want to give people false hope. I thought they might have said, okay, well, the numbers appear to be going down, but that's, we'll have to see over a longer period of time. But eventually some down here is where there was a provincial announcement and they indicated that there was an announcement that an announcement would be made about opening the province. So I spotted that trend for me at least, um, that there was some hope that there was an improvement before there's an official um, announcement in the news media by the government. And we went down and certainly had a great deal of hope in the midst of later spring. We went down as low as 13, 20 new infections per day, as opposed to some of those that peak in the spring, 341, or now this peak in late fall, 1,732, 1,000, 
726. So this allowed me to see when I wrote this program this spring that yes indeed there was some hope because we were flattening the curve it went further and further though there were some anomalies around here the general trend was down. Now of course um, the news media have published information not only on uh, in graphical format static ones like this where we have new infections per day over time but they have all sorts of more uh, complicated ones where we have um, a seven day average that's plotted interactive ones as well too but what this writing of the program did for me is before we had all that information available and I was just going uh, straight to AHS for the official information it allowed me to get some hope early on.